Uh, in the last video, we talked about the steps from uh, detection, so detecting a stimulus to response. In this video, we're going to talk a bit more about communication and different types of senses involved in communication. So these senses, we have these five senses, which most of us should have, which are sight um, or vision, uh, hearing, then we have touch, we have smell, and we have taste and we're not the only animal or organism that has the different senses most organisms have these five or more or less um, but you need to know how we can use the different senses so start sight hearing touch taste and smell when it comes to communication so we should know what communication is again I, I gave that quick definition in the last video it's basically conveying a message from one organism to another conveying which means um, bringing across right? bringing across bringing across a message from one organism to another. So an example would be that we have a human who speaks, right? So if I say something to you, for example, then I'm producing a signal. So I'm producing a signal. So in this case, A is me. And you produce a response. So you listen, you're, you're kind of, your brain is hopefully working whilst you're listening. And that would be the response. So but if I'm doing it right, if I'm producing good communication, that means you're kind of making sense of what I'm saying. That would be effective communication. Whereas, for example, if I'm saying something, but you can't actually hear, like if, if you have been listening to too much loud music and you can't hear anything anymore, then whilst I'm making these signals, right, you don't have the actual mechanisms to pick up the response because you're deaf in that case, which means whilst I'm trying to communicate a message, there's no communication happening because it's not working properly. So in this case, for that signal to be produced, I need to have something to produce that signal. In this case, my voice box is producing that signal. And you need to have, you need to have something to be able to pick up that change to make the response happen. So in this case, your ears will help you to pick up the response. So when it comes to communications, we need to have ways to produce signals, but also to pick up that signal so we can actually make sense of whatever we're trying to trying to say or trying to do. So example would be if we have sign language, right? So in my case, if someone does sign language to me, I've got no idea what they're saying because I don't know sign language. But if you know sign language and you can see, so you have good eyesight, then obviously if a person who's doing sign language is talking to you through sign language, then all you need is good vision and you can sort of talk to that person, can communicate with that person. But if someone's doing sign language to you and you're blind, then whilst they're trying to communicate with you, they're giving you signals, you don't have the actual ways to pick up that signal, so you're not communicating in that case. It's ineffective communication. The other example would be, again, reading. So um, in this case, it's someone produced some letters. You probably can, you can read that, it probably, probably can't make sense, sense of it because it's German, so it says Achtung, which means warning and you might have guessed that because of that sign as well. So this is one way that I can, someone else can produce a signal through symbols or through pictures. But if you don't have eyesight, then you can't pick up that signal. So it would be pointless. So you need to have producing signals, but we also need to have some mechanism to be able to pick up that signal, and make sense of that signal. Same thing with when it comes to um, speaking or, or, or communication, verbal communication. So yep, someone needs to make sound through their voice box, but if the other person has ears that don't work properly, or and in this case probably also no eyesight, then whilst one person is trying to make bring a signal across to the other person, if he doesn't have the mechanisms to pick up that signal, then it's pointless. So that's basically what we're trying to talk about, communication. Communication between two organisms that bring across information or a message. Now it says we need to talk about different types of senses. So hearing, vision, smell, taste, and touch. And what I'm quickly gonna do is I'm gonna pick up on each of them and kind of explain how they can be used for communication. So hearing should obviously hopefully be kind of fair enough, fair straightforward enough. There we've got the verbal. This is what only more or less humans do. Verbal communication means we use, we talk. Right? So we use um, language. So verbal is language. Now. Whilst many organisms, many animals communicate through um, sounds, right? Sounds like the birds communicate through sounds. 
and many dogs might communicate if they bark, but they're not actually they're not actually making too much sense so that other birds might know what that sound basically stands for, but they're not using symbols like letters or words to communicate. They're just using it for sounds. Right? But for example, birds can communicate all the things for sounds. If there's danger coming, so if there's trouble, they can communicate that for sounds, danger. If you have um, maybe if they want to build a nest or the young ones and the little ones that they, they do a whole lot of beep, 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 sound like the, the wanting food sound. They can tell their, their mom they want food. Um, all these are sounds that they can use to communicate things to one another. But we can use sounds. Like for example, if someone hits me and I do like the, the whole owl thing, then even though that's not a word, that's not verbal communication, the sound itself will give you a message that that was painful. But we also can do verbal communication. That means we can talk in sentences and words. So we've got both verbal and sound communication uh, to convey a message, right? So that's how we can use hearing and how other organisms and animals use hearing to be able to communicate. Uh, another example would be vision. Right? So vision is using eyesight and there we've got light which comes from all over the place. That light is sent to the back of our eye, our retina, which we'll cover soon as well. And that retina will then send a signal onto our brain and that brain will send a signal back and give us a picture of what we actually saw, right? So the stimulus in this case would be the light. This would be our stimulus because the light was not put there beforehand. But if you see something, we see new light coming in and eventually we can use that stimulus to make a picture of something and that picture we can use for communication. So for example, body language. Right? So if someone someone's grumpy, if someone's happy or sad, and we look at their body or, the, or their facial expressions, you can usually tell how they're feeling. So they can communicate a message just for their facial expressions, which we can pick up if we have vision, right? So if, if they look unhappy and we are blind, then we wouldn't be able to tell. But if we have vision, working vision, we can tell that they might have some kind of grumpy mood, simply by the way their face looks. Um, another example of visual communication would be the peacock. Uh, the reason why I've got a picture is I'm German and if someone said to me peacock, then I would have no image coming up in my brain because I don't know what a peacock would have been. So this is what a peacock looks like. So the peacock is the thing that has a really nice looking um, feathers. Now in this case, if there's a female, this would be a male peacock. If there's a female peacock looking at this male peacock, those feathers would tell, that, would tell the female peacock how um, fertile, so how likely it is um, that this actual male will produce offspring, will produce babies, or also how healthy it is. So in this case, it's using its feathers to communicate a message to the female um, peacock. But if the female peacock didn't have any eyes, didn't have any vision, then it wouldn't be able to pick up that signal. Right? So the signal is the actual feathers, but the female still needs to have the actual eyes to be able to pick up that signal. Another way, so this was the vision, right? And the next is the smell. So smell was, we've got different types of chemicals that usually come to our nose, right? So we've got these chemicals that move up for our nose. And here we have some chemoreceptors. Remember chemoreceptors were receptors that pick up chemicals. These chemoreceptors would send a signal on to our brain and there we could interpret the actual message. Now, we don't use smell too much in communication, but other animals do. An example would be, for example, a dog. They use it to um, identify themselves. So, if, for example, one dog smells another dog's bum, like the back of their, I'm going to say ass, but yeah, the bum, the, the, the ass. Um, so, if a dog smells each other's bums, they basically know who that dog is and kind of they can tell quite a bit about their personality by simply smelling. Right? So they're communicating, you know, we have to shake hands, talk to each other. All the dogs have to do is smell themselves off their bum and that gets a message across. That communicates a message. So they can use smell for communication. And ants are a good example as well. So what ants do is ants produce something called, I'm trying to spell this right, thero moans. So you probably have seen this before. If there's one ant that might have gotten, so if this is one ant that has found food, right? So it's from food here and this ant has found its food. 
all of a sudden, what you're going to see is you're going to see like zillions of, sand, of ants that are moving in a line towards that food. Right? So one ant found it. All of a sudden, there's like a huge line of ants. So how, is the, how does that work? How that, could, could that ant have told the other ants what's going on? Well, this ant that has found the food will actually produce something called these pheromones. And these pheromones are chemicals. So these chemicals are then spread to other areas. And any ant that picks up that, that actual pheromone, the, the scent, knows it needs to follow that smell to be able to get to food. Right? So that's how ants can communicate, for example, where food is. So they often do it in terms of food. But I think they also do it when it comes to, for example, if, if you heard an ant, it might produce pheromones and tell all the other ants that there's danger, or sometimes even that there's intruder. So it's not, I think red ants are the ones that if you hurt them, they're going to tell their other red ant buddies to come and help that ant, so you're gonna have all of a sudden you're gonna have lots of ants on you that all bite you, and that's because of pheromones that communicate messages. Right? So that's the example of ants and smell communication. Now the next one is taste. Now again, we don't really communicate with taste. Um, the one example I gave is maybe if you cook food. So for example, if you don't like someone and you cook really bad food for them, right? So maybe you put salt instead of sugar into a cake. And then if that person eats that cake and tastes that salt, then he might realize maybe that person doesn't like me for putting salt into my cake. So that's, that's I guess, one kind of far-fetched idea of how we can communicate something using taste. But we don't usually use taste too much for communication. But an animal called a chameleon does. And again, I'm, I'm going to put a picture up because, again, for me, those words would usually mean very little. But a chameleon is one of those, those animals that has, a, that has a long tongue. And it can fetch random insects from random places. So this chameleon, what it can do is it will also poop a, a chemical. So if, for example, it's, if there's a tree somewhere, oops, if there is a tree somewhere, and it likes to keep this, so it likes to keep this tree for itself, what it will do is it will come and it will poop a chemical. So this would be a chemical onto this tree. And what happens next is if a different chameleon comes, so if a new chameleon comes that might want to take this tree for its you know, shelter, it can taste this poop. And if it tastes it, it knows there's, a, there's already a different chameleon there, so it, it needs to go away because it's already occupied. Right, so they can use taste to be able to um, kind of tell others messages, especially when it comes to if they already have that territory, if they have to go and find new territory because that territory is already taken. Like dogs, like dogs always leave their urine on their territory. Chameleons do that too, but chameleons actually have to lick it to be able to know who's there and who's not because chameleons have a very bad sense of smell, so they have a very good sense of taste to make up for it. Right, and the last one was touch. So one, I mean, touch, we humans use touch a lot, right? We hug, we shake hands, we might give ourselves massages, whatever else. All these would be ways that we can communicate messages. And the ape is also a good example. Apes do many of the same things that we do. Right? So this is, for example, a very cute monkey. And this monkey, you can see, is hugging a um, dog. And by hugging, it's telling this dog that it's friendly, right? So the whole I love you kind of thing. But in this case, the monkey is telling the dog that it loves it. And that's so the apes and monkeys use touch to communicate, right? They, they use it to um, communicate love or an, an affection and care. But also, for example, if a monkey slaps another monkey, that other monkey knows that it maybe this monkey doesn't like him because it just got slapped, right? So there's different ways that the apes can communicate through touch, not just through, through showing care, but also through anger as well. And also cats, um, I don't have cats, and I don't, I don't like cats, but I know cats, for example, they often rub against, so if there's a person sitting, and the cat wants to get food from that person, what the cat might do is, it might rub against that person, and by rubbing against a person, what it's trying to do is trying to get its attention, right? So it might use touch to get attention from its owner, and for the owner to give them food. Right? So that's how a cat, for example, could use touch to communicate a message. Um, I'm more of a dog person, but yeah, cats are, cats are okay. Um, but yeah, so this dot point just says, 
gather and process information from second sources to identify a range of senses involved in communication. So know your five senses and know examples of how we could use those for communication. So I mentioned quite a few here, but just know those kind of, know some of, at least one example for each sense. And you should be all good. I hope that was useful.